third graders. Today we are going to be drawing the state bird of Massachusetts, the black-capped chickadee. This is a very common bird in the area and I'm sure you've heard the chickadee lots of times. All you need for your drawing today is paper and a pencil and if you would like to color, choose something small such as a skinny marker or colored pencils. Okay, let's get started. Okay. So I have my paper and my pencil, and I have a photograph of a black-capped chickadee up on my iPad, and I will put the same photograph on my website so that you guys can see it while you are doing your drawings. So to start out with, I'm just going to try to get the basic shapes in place so that everything is about the right size and about in the right spot, and I'm going to save the details for last. So when I look at just the body, ignoring the head and ignoring the wings and the tail and the legs, um, I'm noticing that it's kind of a semicircle shape. So I'm going to sketch in a semicircle and I'm going to try to match the angle for his back because it's not totally flat and it's not straight up and down. It's kind of in between those. Um, and I'm going to make sure that I leave a little bit of space over here for the tail. So I'm going to sketch a little harder than I normally would just because I want to be sure that this shows up on the video for you. But I would encourage you when you're sketching to try to use a really light, soft touch because you want to be able to erase um, any overlapping lines or little guide marks that you wind up with. Because I know I always wind up with a lot of stuff to erase at the end of a drawing. Okay, so I have my semicircle for the body, and when I look at the head, um, it's also kind of a semicircle. It's a little curvier up on top, and then right here under his beak in his throat area, it's pretty straight. So I'm going to draw the curve for the top of his head, like that, that's this part. And then I'm going to let it come down a little straighter and flatter for his throat. And then I'm going to draw a little line down here that kind of separates the feathers on his head from the feathers on his back. Okay, and then I'm going to erase this overlapping line. And now I'm going to look at his wings and the wing really is kind of a teardrop shape where it's really pointy right here and then it curves up over his back and back around along the bottom and it starts a little bit past his body. So I'm going to start maybe right there. So I'm going to go up the back. And I know it's really covered up here by these little feathers, but I'm just going to sketch it in any way so I know I'm putting it in the right spot. Okay, so there's my little teardrop shape for the wing. Now when I look at that wing, I'm noticing that there's kind of a dividing line right here where on this side, the wing feathers are very short. And on this side, not only are they longer, there's also more of them. They're much closer together. So I'm going to divide up my wing. I'm just going to sketch a light little line right here. And I know I'm going to put short feathers up here, long feathers back here. And to draw the feathers, I'm going to draw a long, skinny line like that and it's kind of curvy at the bottom because that's the bottom edge of the feather. Okay, now for the longer feathers I'm going to start down at the bottom. I'm just going to curve down and then right back up and it tucks under those short feathers so it stops. I'm going to go back to the bottom. I'm going to follow that first feather. I'm going to follow this feather. 
So you'll notice I'm drawing these super close together and they actually kind of look like little skinny stripes. Please, please, please though, don't rush them because it's going to look a lot more realistic if your lines don't cross over each other and they aren't crazily uneven. They don't need to be perfectly spaced, but if you start drawing like a maniac, you're going to have a bird with feathers everywhere. Okay, so I've got my wing. Um, the tail starts right under the wing right there. And I'm going to draw it as a long skinny rectangle. And I'm going to draw the feathers as skinny stripes, just like I did for the wings. Okay, now for his beak, it's right about here, kind of towards the midpoint of his head. It's got a little bit of a curve to it, but basically it's a triangle. His eye is really round and it's set pretty far back from the beak. It's not right up next to it, so I'm leaving a little space. And I'm actually noticing there's like a little line around his eye. And I'll sketch in a little highlight. And I'll, you know what? I'm going to shade it in for you guys. Now, for the actual black cap, I see that it starts right next to his beak and it goes right under the eye and then to the back of his head. And you'll notice I'm using these little kind of fuzzy lines to make it look like his feathers are very fluffy. And I'm actually going to go back and do that to the top of his head because his head's pretty fluffy. Okay, and then this white marking is right next to his beak, and then it stops right at the bottom of the beak. And it just angles right back towards his wing, like that, and then this part stays black. Um, for his legs, we really can't see too much of his claws. I can just see a little bit of his black claw, but the front claws are hidden because they're wrapped around the front of the branch. So actually, before I put the legs in, I'm going to sketch out the branch. And there's like a little bit of branch thing in the background too. You don't have to include that if you don't want to. Um, but now that the branch is in place, I can kind of angle his legs out and just show that back claw. So they start right here, kind of close to the middle of his body, right about there. They're not right up under his tail. There's a little space. So I'm going to start here at this mark. And I'm going to draw a line angling forward. And I'm going to draw another line angling forward to match it so that his leg is a shape and not just a line. And then I'm going to draw one little curvy claw right there, like a letter C. I'm going to bring it back. And then the front of his foot is just going to disappear around the front. I can erase right here where the claw overlaps. And then right next to it, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw a line and a claw. And the feathers on his belly 
kind of cover up the top of his leg. So I'm just going to draw these little fluffy marks. Actually, I should go back and make his belly fluffy too, since I did that for the top of his head. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with my chickadee. Um, you can stop there if you want, but if you want to go on and color it, I would encourage you to use colored pencils or skinny markers. I think a crayon might be a little too big for the narrow spaces between his wing feathers. Um, and I would also encourage you to pay really careful attention to what parts of him are what color, because the black cap on top is what really makes the black cap chickadee unique. Okay, I hope you had fun um, and I will make another lesson for you guys next week.